life is what you make it to be. Uganda. I think it's a beautiful country. Living in Uganda is uh, so great that um, it's the pearl of Africa. So Uganda is very different to our home back in the UK. It's obviously a very different climate, a very different communities that we have at home. It's just interesting to see how different some people's lives are here. The standard of living shocks me a little bit. I knew it was obviously a lot poorer at home and I knew it was a developing country, but the kind of level of sanitation and waste disposal is quite shocking. When you're driving down the street and there's just children setting fire to piles of rubbish, that's quite, it's quite shocking to see because it's, we're still living in the same time, but they're so far behind in terms of their development. I think the culture is very different, mainly because we're very far from <laughs> the UK. The refreshing culture that the, those visitors, our friends who come from uh, the UK to Uganda, the picture people have about the UK or when people are coming from UK they perceive or they expect advanced knowledge from them. <laughs> that is a shame. <laughs> the kids take a much more important role in the family. So they do a lot of work in the crops and they t take care of the other kids. the way that the whole community kind of acts as one. So we've been working, we've had a lot of help from adults, from, especially from children in the, in the first couple of weeks. And um, they just want to get involved and help you out, even though it maybe won't affect them that much, but they just want to help you out because you're a visitor. So I think that kids who are already independent at the age of three is quite unheard of in, say, the Western world. Um, and in a way, it's really scary for us because you wouldn't think that a child could like uh, take care of him or herself, and um, and it's not really safe to just walk around on your own if you're like three. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like here. They learn so much more from just going out and exploring the world themselves. I think how everyone interacts as well and how they're more of a community. So we come from a more individualistic society, so we're more of a, like focused on ourselves and our own little family, but here they're more about taking care of everyone's children at the same time. They don't really care whose children they are, they just kind of do it, deal with it. So even if you're two and your sister has no idea where you are, 
there's still other kids that will like help you out and everyone knows where everyone lives so you can just be directed to your house um, or just play with other kids so it's really it's really quite nice and all the adults also look after the children so it's a lot safer. For we cannot be the same in the culture. So when you come and tell somebody, mm, it is bad to take herbal medicine. Okay. Yeah, we know in the UK people use tablets, whatever. Here in Africa or Uganda, people go herbal. Yeah, gets gets leaves from the bush, squeezes them, takes, and it's okay. The media is um, not everybody can access TV, but for the radio radio stations, we have many like beyond two hundred. So you can listen to another, the other station, the other station, the other station. I think everything's kind of bigger and bolder here, like in the media as well. And that kind of reflects. So like clothes are all a lot like brighter and they use a lot more colour and stuff. And I think that might be just because of the like scenery. It's just more colourful in general. So then that kind of reflects in the media. So they'll have like TV shows with like, you know, more colours and like big bold letters on newspapers and stuff like I think in a sense, um, people in the UK do need what they have um, because they're just used to it. So if you're used to something for so long, uh, like if I went to the UK and I took away running water from, from every house, like it would go mental. But um, in another sense, I feel like if you always lived in an environment where you didn't have everything you wanted um, and you kind of had a bit less stuff, then um, you could survive quite happily and maybe even like be more appreciative of things. Um, but yeah, I think there are people who could maybe like live with less stuff, even in the UK. But I think that once you have stuff, you need it. <laughs> Now, somebody may be having more and it's not realistic. Somebody may be having less and it's really realistic with what he has. Somebody may, ha may be having more and he wants more. Somebody may be satisfied with having the less. That means if you have more, you are better. If 
we visit somewhere nice for the weekend, then maybe the next day I'll be, I'll be thinking, oh, I really miss electricity. But if I'll go like a week without electricity, then maybe I won't be, I won't miss it so much. I think they are definitely, I think people here are definitely happy. Um, at least they seem very happy. Obviously, there are going to be people who aren't as happy, but in the grand scheme of things, I would say that people are more satisfied with life um, than in the UK. considered excessive but it's because we're a lot more developed as a country and I can understand that we probably do have a lot more luxuries. <laughs> yeah. And maybe I have, uh, I'm living in a house which is well ventilated, well blasted, whatever. Um, it means I will not, I will, uh, uh, my heart will be at a certain percentage satisfied because this is what makes us work. I remain wanting, exactly. So I'm not, I'm not satisfied, I should say. In the UK, obviously, you wouldn't have to walk to the end of the street to collect water in a jerry can to use for the day, um, which I've just got used to being here now, but that's something that in the future Uganda might have. Um, as it develops and <laughs> in terms of luxuries that might be excessive that we don't need yeah obviously every, if you can have something that makes your life better or more enjoyable then you will have it and in Uganda I guess less people have that but I think it will come to the stage where they do have luxuries like we do in the UK but in the future. I look at somebody who has got the water, who has got the electricity, who has got uh, whatever, the house is self-contained. I look at that one far better than me. So I remain not satisfied. That is it. For it, it, it tells me my children can have the security they want. Instead of sending them for water at the borehole in a distance, they can just draw it from there. If there is power, electricity, my children will stop smelling the gases from the candles. That means I'll just switch on the bulb and they can revise, they can do whatever. Living in Uganda for a month has changed the way I would see my life uh, because I wouldn't take as much for granted I think as I do at the moment. So turning a tap on to clean your teeth, that it's just I've completely forgotten what that feels like or having a toilet that flushes or having a shower that just runs rather than you have to sit and pour a bucket over your head but everything that we consider day-to-day -day life just normal it's not normal for everybody and that's kind of made me see that we are quite lucky to have what we have in the UK. Life is well of it. Life is well of it. So, First thing, I'm satisfied because I have the life. Yes. Hey, Joe! Hey, Joe! 